Hello friends and welcome to my back room here in sunny Tampa Bay, Florida. And today I'm doing a little road trip just an hour and a half north of me to Central Florida, actually Orlando, and yes, that's the home of Mickey Mouse, but I'm not visiting any theme parks. I'm actually visiting the Orlando International Guitar and Music Expo. It's something that I've always wanted to visit and it's going to be my first time. I'm excited to do this and I'd like you to come along with me. All right, now, before I get on out of here, I have a question for you. Have you ever been to a guitar show before? And do you like to go just to browse and see all the vintage gear? Or do you like going to try and sell or trade in some of your equipment? Now, for me personally, I like to go to shows like this because I like seeing the vintage guitars and all the vintage amps. And also, I'm gonna be looking for the unusual things. It's the weird stuff that grabs my attention. Now, since this channel is all about old school guitar playing, of course I'm going to be looking at some old school guitars. Arch tops, guitars from the 40s and 50s, that's really what I'm going to be looking at mostly. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the coverage, the footage that I'm going to film, and let's get on out of here and head to Orlando. I finally arrived at the show, and I gotta say, I'm really impressed. It's a pretty big space, and I'm hoping we'll get to see some rare guitars that we don't get to see very often. Now as I walk around, my first impressions are really good. I'm seeing a lot of cool stuff. Check this out, here's a really nice looking Fender Esquire from 1953. Let's keep moving. There's so much more to see and so many more aisles to walk down. Now here's a guitar that's really cool and I've actually never seen one in person before. This is a 1964 Guild DE500 Dwayne Eddy model. I dig that Guild Bigsby style tremolo. It's got that stair step pick guard. Just a great guitar. Beautiful. Here's a K Barney Kessel Pro. And it's the smallest body version of the K Kessel guitars. Such a great looking instrument. The price on this baby is $3,899. And I just gotta say, I just absolutely love the headstocks on these guitars. So cool. I tell you, I love these old Gibsons. They sound great. I own a 1957 ES-125 and that's one of my favorite guitars. Here's a guitar that I really like. This is a Gibson ES120T, and T stands for Thin Line. These guitars back in the day were entry level student models, and they have the same pickup you'll find on a Melody Maker. It's got a Brazilian rosewood fingerboard, and they're asking for $1,995, and comes with a hard case. Now here's some personal favorites of mine. This is a 1955 Harmony H62. These guitars come with Gibson P13 pickups. I absolutely love those pickups. This guitar here was selling for $1,250 with the original case. There was also another H62 there in blonde. You can see it has no truss rod. The earlier H62 models didn't start with truss rods. They started putting in truss rods just a little bit later. Now, if anyone is interested, this is an annual event. It happens every January. They've done it for decades now, and I believe this is their 36th event. If you're into guitars, this is something you don't want to miss. This is really cool. Now, here's some prices on some of these beauties right here. This is a 1950 ES-175 
and the asking price is $8,750. Next to it is a 1974 Gibson ES-175 and the price on that is $5,995. And right here, this is a real beauty. This is a 1947 Gibson ES-300 for $7,995. Buckaroos. I just dig this guitar. It's a great early post-war arch top. Fantastic instrument. Here's a Guild Aristocrat going for $5,499. And here's another guild. It's a X50 from 1954. And this is going for $1,600. At the expo, there were some cool shirts for sale. I was so tempted to pick one up, pick maybe two up. Uh, you know, the younger version of me wouldn't have had the self-control that I have now. And I probably would have bought a bunch. I did see a few that I really wanted. So, Maybe next time, I'll probably pick one up and support them. Um, yeah, definitely next time. I spy a Grammatico in the back and two Fender Deluxes. The one in the front is from 1956 and the price is $5,400. Here's a 1945 Epiphone Electar Zephyr Amplifier for $800. Really neat to see this here. Now I'm always up for seeing some Gretsches. I'm a Gretsch guy, so seeing this very nice looking 1962 Gretsch 6120 is a real treat. And they're asking for $4,995. I think in 62, that's when they started with the double cutaways and those painted on F-holes. Now feast your eyes on this gang. This is a 2001 Custom Shop ES150 selling for $6,995 and it's number 27 of only 33 made. Now what's interesting is for this price you can get yourself an original one. Now the ES150 model is arguably one of the most important electric guitars of all time. This model was the first commercially made electric guitar and it's usually most associated with guitarist Charlie Christian. Here's a 1958 Gibson Super 400 selling for $25,000. And the second owner of this guitar was rock and roller Rick Derringer. And it says right here, Rick Derringer purchased this guitar in 1965 with the funds from his first royalty check from the number one hit, Hang On Sloopy. And a little side note here, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo is such a cool tune. Just had to put that out there. I love it. <laughs> and I just had to check out these thin twin guitars. There were a few of them. So unique looking. Just standing near them like that got me thinking of the sounds of Southside Chicago in the 1950s. Well friends, that's all the time that we have for this video today. I hope you enjoyed the footage. I tried to cover as much as I could and also enjoy it for myself. There were a couple of early 60s Stratocasters there that I wanted to get some footage of for the video, but sadly, I did not. I ended up not being able to get over to them and film them. But all in all, I had a great time. I met some cool people and saw some awesome guitars. The Orlando International Guitar and Music Expo did not disappoint. So glad that I went. And now, friends, I'd like to leave you with some inspiring words. Like most people, every once in a while, I tend to overthink things. And actually, it's something that I used to do a lot in the past, but nowadays, I don't do it so much anymore. And here's a few reasons on why I quit that habit. One, it ruins situations. Two, when you're doing this, sometimes you tend to twist things around in your head. Three, it simply just makes you worry. And four, it mostly just makes things worse than they really are. And with that, friends, I'm going to say goodbye to you. Much love to you all. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon in another guitar video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.